Hey there. So in this video, we are going to complete um, the ecology food chains, food webs, and trophic pyramid notes. We are going to need packet page 153. So go ahead and cut that out and glue it into your notebook if you haven't done so already. So first thing we need to do um, is talk about a couple of our vocabulary terms, make sure we understand um, those terms. So first is a habitat. So a habitat is the place where the organism actually lives. So the physical geographical location of that organism, that is its habitat. An organism's niche is the role that it plays in its environment. So we're going to talk about a couple different types um, of organisms, producers, consumers, different types of consumers. Uh, so the habitat is the physical place where the organism lives, but its niche is its role in the environment. So what um, is its job as far as its place in the ecosystem, okay? So let's take a look at um, producers. So producers are organisms that make their own food. They capture um, sunlight energy from um, the sun and convert it into chemical energy. There are some types of producers called chemotrophs that capture um, chemicals and convert the chemicals into energy. Um, so you have photoautotrophs like the uh, fern that we see right here, um, trees and grass, those are all photoautotrophs because they're capturing sunlight energy and converting it into chemical energy like sugar. But then we also have chemoautotrophs. These are organisms that live deep down in the ocean and they capture chemicals from hydrothermal vents and turn them into um, energy, glucose. So a couple of examples of producers, plants um, such as trees, grass, um, but also algae, um, right? Photosynthesis occurs in um, aquatic environments, not just on land. Um, so Producers use the process of photosynthesis, again, to capture that energy from the sun. So they need carbon dioxide, water, and then the sunlight energy. And then these ingredients are converted into one molecule of glucose and then oxygen. The few producers that use the process chemosynthesis, they break down compounds that contain um, chemicals like sulfur and nitrogen in order, oops, sorry, I clicked the button, um, in order to obtain their energy. Next are consumers. So consumers are organisms that eat other um, things for food. Consumers are also known as heterotroph. So autotroph, that word auto meaning self, troph meaning feeding, like a, a trough, um, you know, that's something would feed out of. So autotroph is self-feeding. They make their own food. Heterotrophs, hetero meaning different. So they are different feeding, meaning they have to go and get food in order to obtain energy. So some examples of consumers would really be any type of animal, rabbit, human, um, fish, anything like that. There are five different types of consumers. Um, the first type is an herbivore. These are consumers that eat only plants. So the example we have here is a squirrel. So let's make sure for our notes, for our example of an herbivore, we're gonna put squirrel. Um, people can choose to be vegetarians, but they are not herbivores. The second type of consumer is a carnivore. Carnivores eat only other carnivores or heterotrophs. They are meat eaters. So our example here, we have um, looks like um, a wolf that's captured, um, a rabbit. Um, wolves are carnivores. They have to eat meat. 
Up next, we have um, number three. The third type of consumer is an omnivore. Omnivores can eat both plants and animals. So this is where humans are. Humans, we are designed to eat plants and animals. Um, you know, again, we mentioned vegetarians over here. That is a lifestyle choice. Um, but humans are designed to be omnivores, to eat and obtain energy from both plant and animals. The fourth type of consumer is a scavenger. Um, scavengers do not kill for their food. Um, they eat animals that have already died. Um, so the, the example we have here is a vulture. So vultures are scavengers. So it looks like this armadillo um, died. Um, maybe it's roadkill, it got hit by a car, um, or maybe got into a fight with another armadillo and lost. And so this vulture is scavenging. It's coming along, it found this dead um, armadillo and it got itself a meal. The fifth type of consumer are decomposers. Decomposers break down rotting organisms for food. Um, so two examples of decomposers, we have bacteria and fungi. They are both decomposers. So decomposers typically come along after the scavengers. The scavengers have picked up, uh, picked off all the the meat and the fat and everything that they can eat, and then the bones and the hard bits that are left behind get decomposed. So now that we understand producers and consumers, let's take a look at how um, energy moves through the ecosystem. So the food chain is the simplest way to show how energy is moved from one organism to another. So I have an example of a food chain here. So in our notes at the bottom left, it says the directions tell us to show how energy moves from one organism to another. So we're just gonna write down this food chain. So all energy starts with the sun. We have our producer, which here is um, an acorn tree. So I've got an acorn, which is then eaten by my primary consumer, which is an herbivore, this squirrel. The squirrel is then eaten by, um, looks like a coyote, and then the coyote is eaten by the wolf. So in my notes, I'm just gonna simply write that out. I don't have to draw anything. Acorn, squirrel, coyote, wolf. So we know that the tree is a producer because it's getting its energy from the sun. So these yellow arrows here are showing where the energy is transferring to. So this acorn tree got energy from the sun. So it is a producer. Then we have our consumers. So these animals had to consume something else in order to get energy. They could not make it themselves like the plant. Um, next, we have a trophic pyramid. pyramid excuse me. Um, trophic pyramid, pyramids show how energy is lost in food chains. Um, actually, most of the energy is lost when we move from one trophic level to another, and only about 10% of the energy is actually passed to the next trophic level. So we can see here, we, I, I've drawn out my pyramid, and I've got my acorn down here, because that's my producer, and it actually has the most energy. Let's say it has um, 1,000 kilo, uh, kilocalories of energy. So a thousand calories, but most of that is going to be lost as heat. Only 10% is actually going to be passed on to the squirrel. So if this acorn had a thousand calories, 10% of that would be a hundred. Well, the squirrel is going to lose 90% of its energy, or sorry, excuse me, 90, yeah, 90% of its energy is heat. So when the squirrel gets eaten by the coyote, it had a hundred calories. Um, so the coyote gets one calorie. Most of it is going to be lost as heat. When the coyote gets eaten by the wolf, it, the wolf will get 0.1 calorie. So we went from 1,000 calories to 100 to 1 to 0.1. Because most energy is lost as heat and only 10% is actually passed from one trophic level to the next. So top predators, top consumers 
have to eat a lot of food in order to get um, enough energy to survive. So um, here's another example of what I was talking about with the trophic pyramid. If we think about this in terms of money, you, know, you start with $10, which is a thousand pennies, but only 10% is going to get passed on to the next level. So now I'm down to a hundred pennies, which is $1. I'm going to only pass on another 10%, which is 10 pennies. And then the final 10% would be one penny. So you lose most of your energy or your money as heat. Um, the last thing is a food web. Um, a food web is a diagram that shows all of the possible feeding relationships. So we've got a food web here. All energy, though, remember, starts with producers. So autotrophs, so that would be our grass. So the grass, if I follow the arrows, gets eaten by the deer, the bird, and the grasshopper. So all three of these, the grasshopper, the bird, and the deer, are herbivores or primary consumers. And then from there, we can see that the deer could get eaten by either this fox um, or the cougar that's up here. Um, the bird could be eaten by the cougar or it could be eaten by the snake. So food webs are a little bit more complicated. They're more complex um, than just a simple food chain. They can also show us organisms that are in competition with one another. Um, so again, the herbivores, the deer, the bird, and the grasshopper, they are in competition with each other for this single food source of grass. Um, the frog is also in competition with the bird because both the frog and the bird eat grasshoppers. So frog and birds are competitors. So food webs have a lot of information they can tell us about how energy is being passed through the ecosystem. So here is just a picture of the bottom of my notes just to make sure that your notes are correct and ready to be turned in. So I've got my food chain that I wrote out. I drew my trophic um, pyramid. So I can see the same food chain written in the pyramid. And then I did red arrows to show that the energy is lost as heat. And then I did blue arrows to show the actual energy that gets passed on. So lost as heat, energy, lost as heat, energy. And then even the wolf loses heat. And then I drew out the food web from the previous slide right here. I'm not a very good artist, so I didn't actually draw the bird and the snake and the raccoon. Um, I just simply wrote it out. But that works. It's good. I like it. So that is it. For these notes on food chains, food webs, and trophic pyramids, if you have any questions about these notes, just let me know. Thanks.